I'm very happy to be here. Uh, my name is Martin. I uh, live in the southeast of Sweden in a small county that is known as Blekinge, but I also work in Stockholm quite a lot and also in Lund. Uh, so my presentation will be about the broader role of uh, SMEs um, in local economic development and the growth of uh, cities. Uh, and I will start by just pointing to a number of empirical regularities that hold for Sweden, that also hold for many other countries. Uh, so the first thing I want to show is this. Uh, so this is a graph showing the relationship between the rate of startup of new firms in a city. Uh, that's what we measure on the, on the vertical axis or the y axis, if you so want. And on the uh, horizontal axis or the x axis, we are measuring the uh, density of small firms in a city or a, a region. This is actually the precise data here is Swedish municipalities, which is in a very rough form is uh, Swedish uh, cities, you can say. So the point of this graph is just to show that there's a very strong relationship uh, and robust positive relationship between the, the, uh, the uh, local density of small firms and subsequent startup activity. Uh, in fact, if you do you know, econometric analysis on, these, uh, on the determinants of startups in a city, you will find that the local density of small firms is a very robust um, explanatory factor. Its influence holds, you know, whether you control for the classic endogeneity issue or you control for a lot of other factors. This is a very strong relationship. Um, secondly, um, we all, as many, much research show, there is also a strong relationship between the rate of startup activity in a region and subsequent employment growth. So this is an old hypothesis that's been around in literature for, for years. And recent research which takes a lot of effort in trying to address all the, you know, the possible um, reasons for this, uh, for this uh, relationship shows that this relationship appears to be causal in the sense that if you have a city where you have a lot of startup activity, that is a causal factor in explaining the city's subsequent employment growth. Um, finally, I want to show this. This is the relationship for Swedish cities between uh, the density of, um, or, or the employment fraction uh, in small firms and subsequent employment growth. As you can see, there is a small positive relationship. Uh, so cities with higher uh, rate of uh, small firms or density of small firms tend to grow a little bit more, but there's a, it's a quite shaky relationship. However, if you undertake econometric analysis of this and accounting for many other factors, the positive association is very robust. So cities that have a lot of small firm activity tend to grow in terms of employment, all else equal. Okay, in the literature, these types of, of relationships is sometimes referred to as the small firm effect, right? So, so this observation that cities with a lot of small firm or SME activity tend to show high startup rates and tend to have, which in turn appears to stimulate employment growth and also that there seems to be a small but weak um, relationship between SME, SME activity and direct employment growth. Um, is known as the small firm effect. So what is, what is behind this effect? Why, why is this, um, these patterns emerging? And, and um, I will just discuss, briefly discuss a number of uh, for arguments for why this effect is there. Um, two general arguments is that it has to do with local business climate or what some people call an entrepreneurship culture. And the, pretty much the argument is that, well, in an area where we have a lot of small firm activity, you will over time develop a good business climate or an, an entrepreneurial culture. A second argument is that a high density of small firms means that you have thick markets for, thick markets for suppliers, um, also that you have thick markets for labor, and this sort of pulls um, productive supplier-customer linkages in the region that stimulates uh, growth. Two other arguments that are not so much in the literature that I come from, but is out there in, 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 the, in, in the literature at large, has to do with place attractiveness. So as was shown in a previous uh, presentation, for instance, a lot of SME activity occurs in wholesale and retail, retail industries and which, in where there are strong services. And these are typical areas that, that, that make places livable or associated with quality of life. Um, and the last point I want to make has to do with business-friendly local regulations. Um, and the argument is that, well, in places where you have a lot of SME activity, um, um, over time, you know, that will push local uh, policymakers and public policy officials to, you know, 
uh, enforce and drive the, the local regu regulatory environment in a more business-friendly way. So I will discuss quickly these four in a little bit more detail um, and then um, uh, continue. So, the argument about local business climate and entrepreneurship culture. Well, um, what we know from, from a lot of <coughs> research is that small firms are much more likely to spawn new entrepreneurs. This is a very well-established well research. If you look at you know, spatially aggregated data on cities or regions or counties, you find this result. And you also find this result if you do, let's say, if you follow individual workers and check their inclination to leave an employee to start their own firm, you will see that they are much more likely to do so if you have worked in a small firm. Um, so the argument here is that if, you have a, a, if a local area is dense in SME activity, it means that a lot of people work in small firms and they are more inclined to develop entrepreneurial human capital. That is sort of, sort of the argument uh, in a nutshell. The other type of argument sort of lifts the perspective and do not necessarily focus on employees in small firms. They better take a broader uh, view of the local environment and they say that, well, there are social interaction and networks effects um, that works in favor of, um, of uh, local entrepreneurial activity. Uh, so some argument is that, well, if you live in a, in a city or a, or a local area where there is a lot of entrepreneurs around you, you will, you, know, you, you will be positively influenced by uh, social interactions effect or networks effect in the sense that, well, you know, if they can do it, I can do it too. That's a typical argument about Olaf Sorensen and Audia in their um, study um, on entrepreneurship. There is also, uh, Casson talks about the social status effect in the sense that if you, you, you can live in an area where there's a lot of small, small and medium-sized enterprises and if, and if these entrepreneurs, they enjoy, let's say, a high social status that can feed on the local environment and push people to, to actually become uh, entrepreneurs. And the final argument has to do with knowledge and information spillovers. This could be related to the employees working in the small firms, but it can also be a general effect in the sense that an area where there's a density of SME activity, there is also density um, of knowledge and information about the practice of running a business, okay? And that can feed on the local environment. Maria Miniti has sort of put this argument together very neatly, and she says that entrepreneurship creates a culture of itself that influences individual behavior in its favor. And that sort of summarizes this argument about how a city with a vibrant SME activity can over time develop something that we can call an entrepreneurial culture. Okay, going back to the notion of the other argument about peak markets, the argument is pretty much like this, that many of the SMEs that we observe throughout different cities, um, they sell services that are often inputs to other firms. Okay, they can also sell services that are directed to consumers, like coffee shops and stuff like that, but many SMEs are, are, sub, are suppliers. So our classic offers like Shinis and Vernon, they were saying that, well, um, because, of, because of this variety of local suppliers, that means that a local environment with a lot high density of SMEs, they have a lot of, of, um, of, of firms that can readily supply startups. So that means that if you have a density of SMEs, it can push, it can push um, subsequent entrepreneurial activity and have other firms growing because of there's variety in, in the suppliers. So there are less issues of classic hold up problems like predicted by transaction cost theory and so on. So that's one of these strong arguments. And recently there have been a lot of analysis that is actually taking this theoretical argument very seriously. Uh, examples of this is Ed Glazer's analysis of, of, of the US and also Rosenthal and Strange, also analysis for US cities. And they, sh they find very strong empirical support for this argument about market thickness on the supply side or supplier side in order to explain the rate of new firm formation as well as growth of established firms that use these inputs, okay? Finally, also I should say that thick markets also encompass the idea about labor pooling, which relates to Marshall's classic writings about the benefits of clustering and so on. And this, this argument is basically saying that, well, you have a similar effect on the labor side, that if you have a lot of different uh, suppliers and a, a lot of, and a variety of SMEs, um, you know, churning on the, well, not churning, but, the flow of labor between firms can be increased and the matching between, between workers can be, can be much more better. Um, so that's a, a similar argument. But I would say that recent analysis shows that this 
and the empirical support for this argument, specifically about SMEs, is rather weak. Instead, it's the, the, uh, the supply argument that actually uh, seems to bite. Okay. Thirdly, place attractiveness. Well, this is an argument that is out in the literature, but there is actually not so much empirical research besides on this issue, at least not from the, from the literature that I come from. But I think the arguments here are important to recognize anyway. So, um, I mean, if you look at the statistics on SMEs, um, well, I, th I know a lot about SMEs in Sweden, and it's certainly the case that, as also was shown in the previous, uh, the previous presentation, that many of SMEs, they work in retail industries, uh, wholesale industries, and industries that, 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 that we typically relate to, things like coffee shops, restaurants, bars, electricians, carpenters, stuff like that. Um, so these are industries um, where a variety of activities in this type actually relates to things that we th think about livability or quality of life, a um, variety of the things that actually makes the cities um, attractive. So that means that actually SMEs has a very important role in placemaking of cities in the sense that they, they are a key element in the, in the local economic development because SME activity is very much geared towards those activities that we as consumers actually are, are drawn to. Okay? So one example of this, and this research that I'm going to exemplify here is not really focused on this particular angle, but it's research that shows that, shows that for example, for Sweden, if you, try to, if you want to understand where the movements of people between cities and what makes places attractive, actually a variety of the retail industry in a city or the retail services offered in a city is very important. And such a variety of retail services is, is actually in part driven by a lot of entrepreneurship in such kinds of basic sectors. So that's an overall argument for why SME activity actually is related also to notions like place attractiveness. Okay. Uh, finally, business-friendly lo ro local regulations. This is something that I think is important, and it also bears directly on policy. So, uh, in most countries, local authorities have a large impact on regulations. Okay? Uh, and they, this impact runs through, through, mechanism, uh, through, sorry, through two mechanisms. In some areas, local authorities have the authority to design regulations locally. Okay? Secondly, local authorities are responsible for the way in which nationally enacted regulations are enforced in practice. Okay? And this is an important point because enforcement of nationally enacted regulations actually do vary quite a bit across, across, um, across different cities and, and, and regions. And this is very difficult to, sort of, uh, to, to, to show in a very neat way in empirical analysis that we have some evidence for Sweden actually that Areas that by, that by tradition have a high rate of new firm formation or a very, nice, very high density of, of uh, SME activity are areas in which you know, uh, both regulations are such, but also the enforcement practice of, reg of regulation actually seems to work a little bit more in, in a more business-friendly way. So, while it's natural to think that, be, that, that, that the regulations have an influence on SME activity, we also find some evidence from the, also from the other perspective that a high SME activity in a locality can actually drive also to make policy um, officials actually enacting and enforcing regulations in a more business-friendly way. And these things matter, uh, I should say. Um, and this, is, this can be things like zone regulation, it can be you know, quite easy things like the, the length of time it takes to, for a firm to get a permit to expand their operations, for instance. So it doesn't need to be these high profile policy issues, but you know, more mundane things like does it take two months or does it take six months or does it take a year to get a permit for a firm that wants to expand their operations and maybe build a larger, a larger plant, you know? These are things that, that we've seen in the Swedish context actually matter quite a bit. Um, and as I said, there are significant local variations. These things are very hard to measure, but this is a graph uh, that we've done based on analysis undertaken by the Swedish Confederation of Industries. So it's, uh, it's a survey where they ask local entrepreneurs um, how they value uh, two things. Uh, one is the, the, the local authorities' implementation of laws and regulations. And, that, and the third thing is they ask 
local entrepreneurs about the perception of the attitudes of public officials towards uh, entrepreneurs when they come to the municipality and ask for permits or they question how they implement zoning regulations and so on. And here you can see that, that the, what we measure here on the, on the, on the uh, vertical axis is the percentage of local entrepreneurs that answer good, very good, or excellent. And this is just to show, I you don't claim anything, any causality or anything here. The simple point is to show that there are large spatial variations in how local entrepreneurs perceive of the attitudes and of local, of local uh, public officials and also the, how they implement regulations. We also have some evidence, more hard evidence on this. This is simply perceptions, um, but it's indicative of that there are actually strong uh, variations in this. Okay, so what do we learn from this? Um, well, just a few points. First of all, cities with vibrant small businesses will tend to continue to have vibrant small businesses, right? So there's a, okay, there's a certain circularity in this argument, right? Uh, so the, so we have, there is much to gain by getting SME activity going in a city or a region because a lot of research points to the direction that there are these positive circular effects once you get this going. Um, it also points to the, there's a direct effect of SME activity in the sense that they employ people and provide uh, jobs and, and incomes to, to local, uh, to local uh, residents. But there is, also, there is also this indirect effect, you know, and the indirect effect being on the entrepreneurial climate, the, the fitness of the markets, place attractiveness, and also business regulations. Uh, a final point I want to make also is that what this research also shows very clearly is that this literature... Uh, points to effects that, uh, that, that are there um, without, let's say, without having, having the, tr the, the really high-tech Schumpeterian entrepreneurship in mind, okay? So if you go around, at least in Sweden, in, 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 in cities, uh, and look at their SME sector, a lot of what is going on in, in, in the SME sector is very far from this high-tech uh, gazelle type of uh, Schumpeterian entrepreneurship. It's more mundane entrepreneurship, or what you could, what you could call Main Street entrepreneurship. Um, uh, and that, I think, is important to, 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 to think about, and this is an argument that has been out for a while. Uh, David Orders has written about this. Uh, there's a recent paper by Howard Aldrich uh, doing a similar point. And also, I should say that a lot of the literature that actually go at great length to try to really isolate the causal effect of new firm formation as one business activity on, empl on employment growth, they measure the overall self-employment rate or the overall startup rate. There is really no direct focus on this very high prolific um, SME activity. But these, these show that SME activity in general actually seems to matter. How much time do I have left? There. Getting to yeah. them. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I have planned to, to talk a little bit about some more details of the evidence we have on these issues on, in our research. So I will skip this through very, 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 very quickly. But I can say like this: we have done a lot of analysis um, the last five years on these issues, trying to trying to, to uh, uh, test the empirical relevance of the arguments, especially about the arguments about entrepreneurial climate and, and these ideas about an entrepreneurship culture. Uh, no matter how we tweak the data, we do find that there seems to be a very s strong empirical evidence supporting the idea of the entrepreneurial climate in the sense that people that live nearby entrepreneurs or have a network with entrepreneurs are much more inclined to start businesses themselves. Okay? And we have done a, we have a, number of, a series of papers on this, doing the best we can to address endogeneity concerns and all the empirical problems, you know, associated with this, with testing this hypothesis, but we find very clearly that, that this seems to, to be um, working very well. This is a picture from, uh, that are, of a recent paper that we, that we have done on immigrants in Sweden, where we use really high data with high spatial resolution, where we look inside cities about immigrant concentration, and we identify very strong networks effects where you know, immigrants that are recent arrivals to Sweden are much more likely to start firms if they end up in a neighborhood where many people of the same ethnic origin are also entrepreneurs. This is an example. Finally, I want to, uh, to just uh, stop with this. Uh, so, I mean, the name of this conference is the Urban Fabric in SMEs. I just want to say also that uh, we find in our analysis that the urban fabric actually seems to, to matter quite a lot. 
Um, this is just a recent paper we have done on what we call the microgeography uh, of uh, diversity and, and specialization externalities within cities. And we find that where firms are located inside cities is actually have a strong and significant effect on the productivity, also, both for SMEs but also for other firms. Uh, and we find that inside cities, if you are located in a neighborhood or a city district where there are many other firms around you operating in a similar industry, that seems to be beneficial for productivity. So in a nutshell, what this result suggests is that you know, even though you, you, you're located in, in, in this large city with a lot of in, overall variety, the very nearby uh, specialization patterns actually do seem to matter. So the urban, from this perspective, our conclusion is that the urban fabric does matter. So thank you.